At this very moment, my heart is destroyed. Because with my ex-partner, I am very annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> you promised me the world, and I ended up with nothing. <laughs> Not even wrong? the bed on which we used to spend our time fucking. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Welcome to Books and Booze, a bookish and wine and juice podcast. Whether you're a fan of books, drinking, or true crime, this is the place for you. So today we might have background noise because we're in a pub. There will be sounds of the most boring sport in the world on television because it's a sports bar and potentially just other people that don't understand that we're busy talking and also a pepper grinder. Pepper grinder. Leonard is having a beer. What beer are you having? I am having the Newland Springs Passionate Blonde. Oh yeah, Blonde, that's the one with less calories, is it not? You wouldn't call it less calories, no. Oh, right. It's just the style of the beer, it's just... I don't know what I'm having, sweeter. but it's dark red, and it's in a very large glass, so I'm very happy with myself. It's a polka dry, man. Polka a dry. Po- polka dry. Polka dry. All South African... Got to, got to say it like that, eh? South African wine is pretty great, so there's not often you can go wrong unless you get, like, two oceans, which is vile. Mm. <laughs> so, today we're going to be talking about poetry. Poetry. We have a book here called The Complete Poems of Emily Dickinson by Emily Dickinson. <laughs> Surprisingly. Surprisingly. Although I'm guessing that because she's pretty dead. old and dead, <laughs> that she didn't actually make this exact book. No, it, it doesn't look like a very pretty book, to be honest. It looks like it was made quite cheaply and poorly it was from first rate publishers so sorry guys but honestly you might need to up your game because even the cover is really pixelated well i mean when was she born in the 1830s 1840s yeah, but at least just like do it to size because the whole cover i mean they pixelated. didn't have high, high definition cameras in 1840 fuck knows when oh bloody hell okay so the point of doing poetry today is because On Booktube, my YouTube channel for books, I have one of um, the Booktubers that I follow and watch called Adrian from Strip Coverlet. He loves Emily Dickinson's poems and he's always said that I should try and dip my toes into that kind of a genre. So I got this book because of him years ago, but I haven't actually read it. And to be honest, I just don't get poetry. I wish I did because I'd love to write it. But I, I don't understand. So, Leonard, w- what are your thoughts on poetry? They're words. They don't necessarily have to rhyme. It's all about how See, you put no, them I together. See, I always thought that that's what confuses me. Like a what the fuckery is. I always thought when I was growing up and in school, poetry was something that had to rhyme because that's the way they made you do poetry when you were in school. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't rhyme it, it was wrong. So that was my mentality. And now it's like, oh, it doesn't have to rhyme. So what the fuck is poetry? Soul, wilt thou toss again by such a hazard? Hundreds have lost indeed, but tens have won them all. Well, what the fuck does that even mean? That's an Emily Dickinson poem, by the way. Angel's breathless ballot lingers to record thee. Imps in eager caucus raffle for my soul. I, I, I can't comprehend. She's, she's talking about the night. She's asking, will she toss again? Will her soul toss again? It's a hazard because... Her soul she's, toss she's again. Sleeping. No, her she's, soul... She's sleeping. She's talking about the night. Oh, okay, okay. So, so okay, we're going to basically dissect some of Emily Dickinson's poems here. So this is called X Escape. Escape. Ne- <laughs> Escape. You sound like you sound like what's her name from from um, yeah yeah that forgetful fish that I've forgotten the name of Dory. Dory. Yeah, I'm, from the, I'm the Dory now. Okay, so I never hear the word escape without a quicker blood, a sudden expectation, a flying attitude. I never hear of prison broad by soldiers battered down, but I tug childish at my bars only to fail again. So that's basically, from what I understand, is her being stuck and not being able to escape. But why does she not just say that? 
Because the rest of it doesn't make fucking sense to me. Because it's an expression of beauty in words. I can wade grief, whole pools of it. Okay, I get that because I'm experiencing that right now with my fucking heartbreak. I used to that. But the least push of joy breaks up my feet and I dip drunken. Oh, I know what that's like too. Let no pebble smile. Twas the new liquor, that was all. What the fuck? Power is only pain. Stranded through discipline till weights will hang. It's just. Uh, I, I don't get. It's older English, it's understandable. It's understandable to an extent, but. No, I mean, it's understandable that you don't understand it. I'm saying I can understand it to an extent. Mmm. What? Oh dear, it's gonna be good. On this wondrous sea, sailing silently, ho, pilot, ho, knowest thou the shore, where no breakers roar, where oh the God, storms roar, in the silent west, many sails at rest, their anchors fast, thither I pilot thee, land, ho, eternity, ashore at last. She's talking about having died and gone into the endless, eternal life, I suppose. I wonder if there is a biography on Miss Dickinson here. Emily Dickinson's poems were untitled. That's an interesting fact, isn't it? Uh, Miss Dickinson was born in Amherst, Mass, December the 10th, 1830, and died there May the 15th. Oh my god, my fucking birthday! That's dull, 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 <laughs> dull, dull, dull. <laughs> I was going to say something else. But. Her father, Hon, was the leading lawyer of Amherst and was treasurer of the well-known college there situated. It was his custom once a year to hold a large reception at his house, attended by all the families connected with the institution and by the leading people of the town, blah de blah de blah Very boring. I just Love don't it. get it. Like, I wish I could, but I can't. It's like, it's like, for example, short stories. I'm a writer, and I cannot put an entire story into a couple of pages. I don't know how to do it. Mm. The only poet I have ever actually enjoyed thus far in my very minimal experience with poetry is Ruby Cower, who wrote Milk and Honey, and then another book about some kind of flower, but I can't remember that title. But Milk and Honey was fantastic. And it spoke to my soul, not only like, it was feminist, but it was just also extremely deep and just wonderful. I really like Ruby Cower. You wouldn't know her though, but you can Google, you can Google her. I can. Do it. I will do it in but a moment. In but a moment, because he's got something else to say. Yes. What do you have to say? Well, Shakespeare was a bit of a poet as well. Well, of course he was. I mean, my favourite happens to be Shakespeare's 18th sonnet. Aww. Which I almost know word for word. Okay, wait, 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 I'm taking your phone away. No! Read it. Aha! Liar! Well, I know that shall I compare thee to a summer's day. Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds oh. do change the darling birds of May, and summer's leaving hath all too short a day. Okay, so that was all while he was looking in my eyes. I looked so, in your high eyes. five, brother. Yeah. You did well. Rocking that one, rocking some Shakespeare. Okay. See, like, I find Emily Dickinson I just don't quite get yet, and I guess I haven't given her a proper chance, but Shakespeare, I I do get it in a way, and I think that his poems are, are beautiful. So carry on reading, and I'll try and explain why I think they're beautiful. What? Carry on reading the Well, the read sonnet. anything. Any sonnet, I don't really care. Okay, well, we'll just carry on with the 18th song. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature changing course untrimmed. Okay, no, I don't understand it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm just the idiot here, but it is the biggest likelihood, but I don't know. So, look up Ruby Cower, let me do it. 
say something interesting while I look it up because I can't keep talking while I'm concentrating. There was a young woman from Healing. No. <laughs> you had a peculiar feeling. No. She lay on her back. No. And opened a crack. No. And pissed all over the ceiling. How do you even get that kind of reach? We have to have some serious high pressure waterworks so, going so on. So Ruby Cowlett, she does, it's, uh, I don't know what you would call this kind of poetry, but it's just little verses, basically. It's like, she does do a couple of full on poems, but a, a lot of it's just like maybe four quick little, like mm. a, you know, whatever. So it's not like iambic but pentameter it's like, and things like that. But she's so philosophically profound. Like, loneliness is a sign that you are in desperate need of yourself. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful in my eyes. And then, like, but in her book, um, Milk and Honey, she has little drawings, which... Honestly, like anyone can really draw. I'm pretty sure my five-year-old nephew could draw it. But I enjoy it because it adds, adds visual. And so this one is like a drawing of an eye. And it says, no, it won't be love at first sight when we meet. It'll be love at first remembrance. Because I've seen you in my mother's eyes when she tells me to marry the type of man I'd want to raise my son to be like. Well, my wife messed up completely, didn't she? <laughs> And then there's one with a, like the the globe on it, and it says, "I am sorry this world could co- could not keep you safe. May your journey home be soft and peaceful." There's another one about a chick with no face, and it says, "Every time you tell your daughter, you yell at her out of love. You teach her to confuse anger with kindness." which seems like a good idea till she grows up to trust men who hurt her because they look so much like you. It's deep. I really like Ruby Cower. Like, I, there's something about it I just get. Then there's like one where a woman is pregnant and you can kind of see into her womb and it says, when my mother was pregnant with her second child, I was four. That's when we're four years apart. So this is relevant. Yeah. I pointed at her swollen belly, confused at how my mother had gotten so big in such a little time. My father scooped me McDonald's. in his tree trunk arms and said, the closest thing to God on this earth is a woman's body. It's where life comes from. And to have a grown man tell me something so powerful at such a young age changed me to see the entire universe rested at my mother's feet. If the entire universe rested at our mother's feet, we'd be absolutely fucked because she is not sane. Smelly feet. Very. And just not accomplishmentous. You don't have to talk about that though, do you? Yeah. Well, see, books and booze is all relative. But you don't overdo it in alcohol because that's when it becomes a problem. <laughs> I have a lisp, leave me alone. Stop it, Azor. Do you don't know what you're doing? Open the door. At least I don't call you Whiskey Face. Whiskey Face. <laughs> what was that our episode? Was that the episode? I don't know. Do you want to carry on or not? I don't know. We're very uninspired. There once was a dog that pissed on a log. The log was made of maple. And then it it shagged a hog. Made it into a table under which the dog slept every night. The dog was white apart from when it slept on the table because the log was still wet. And when he woke up, he was yellow. I don't understand this it was, anymore. It was a, it was let's, a poem, let's do, let's but it doesn't do, have to rhyme. Let's do a poem where we have to rhyme off each other and we do one sentence each, okay? Okay, I'll go okay, okay, okay. So, I'll start. <clears throat> Brother and sister were sitting at a pub. I'm looking at an old man kicking a stub. That is true, I promise. <laughs> And in Australia, which obviously I'm not there anymore, but a stubby is a beer. A stubby is a beer. Yeah, I've heard of that. So kicking a stub is probably a horrible thing to say for any Australians listening because they'll think it is absolute 
sacrilege. I mean like a stub of a tree that's been okay, chopped wait, down. Okay, wait, wait. So, so we're going to do... I'll do a sentence. You have to follow a sentence. Then you can do another sentence with a different rhyming word at the end. And then I have to rhyme with your sentence, right? I'll try and follow that. Yep, okay. So... Um, the sun and the moon are very... I don't fucking know. I'm not very good at this poetry thing. Um, um, this is going to be really hard for me to remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. So, let's do one about breakups. At this very moment, my heart is destroyed. Because with my ex-partner, I am very annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> he promised me the world, and I ended up with nothing. <laughs> Not even right? the bed on which we used to spend our time fucking. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I can't do it. Sorry, it had, to, had to make it sexual there. What else actually rhymes with nothing? Um, okay, wait, wait. There's not a um, lot that rhymes with nothing, really. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. We're back. There was a rough, rough drunken man. But we're in a pub, so that's normal. It's to be expected. Yes. But said drunken man seems to have the hots for me, and he's about 70, so... Yes. It's quite scary. Okay, where were we? Ba -ba the stupid... Never oh. again will I cook salmon for my partner. What the fuck rhymes with partner? <laughs> Well, it's going to be something smart. Never again will he undo the clips on my <laughs> top garments fastener. Fastener. I am pretty fucking upset. Because he'll never again make me wet. <laughs> <laughs> well, he will in my... Imagination. <laughs> Which right now is prone to emancipation. <laughs> oh god. This is so funny. I think I should have more wine. Perhaps you should just drink it straight from the stein. Okay, you do something. I want to rhyme with your words. Alright, go. But carry on with this whole like breakup one. It's hilarious and it's making me actually laugh at myself, so that's yeah. good. We hit a fork in the road, and there was a stop sign. All I want to do is find someone that will be mine. You mean somebody that would tow the line? No, I just want someone to make me shine. Or buy you lots of expensive wine. That would be divine. <laughs> but of this man and creature, you continually pine. People are going to have to get in line. <laughs> Queuing for wine, how uncouth. No, not wine. They're going to have to queue for jade, you bloody... What round was queues? Sleuth? Moose? Whatever. I'm going with sleuth. Sleuth's good. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> taking sleuth. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Oh, sleuth is like someone on the internet that just... Well, like a person that's hot on the trail of things and knows what they're up to and quite sharp and smart and, and, and mm -hmm. figuring stuff out. Yes. Okay, carry on. Perhaps one day we could go to an American diner and get each other inside a booth. I actually don't know where this is going, but we could have this pancakes and will coffee. Become. Because I will not date a moffy. That's a South African word for a gay person. It not might... that we have anything against gay people, because gay no. people are lovely. Well, I think so. Yes. Some of them. Most people think <laughs> you're gay. How can they possibly think I'm gay? Because you're you. I like boobs way too much to be gay, okay? Gross. Not what your sister wants to hear. Well, I could have said more than boobs, but okay. All right, we're doing slam poetry here, so... Ahem. We digress. We digress. Once upon a time, 
I lived in Australia. <laughs> Magnum alien you. No. Australia is not even worth rhyming with. No, it's not because fuck Australia. I wouldn't even do that. I did. What, the whole thing? No, I felt massive. I felt one man in Australia, that's enough. Wow. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to the loo. We'll take a short break. Right, well, Jade's in the loo. I thought I'd do some rude limericks for fun. It's one of my favourite sort of silly ones. There once was an old maid of Fife who had never been kissed in her life. So she saw a large cat and she said, I'll kiss that. But the cat said, not in your life. A talking cat. Oh, God's sake, he's got it going again without me. I just got back from a pee. I'm so sorry for whatever the fuck he said. I never change my lucky socks. My mother doesn't know. She'd throw them in the washer and go back to being slow. I'm faster than a cheetah now, and I never I, tell. I'm I've going, worn these I'm socks for 30 days. I wish they didn't that. smell. Oh, God's <laughs> sake. I'm tired. I've been working all day. Okay, bye. Bye.